we're on the move again after a six week break at home so six weeks ago we were released weren't we from our our COVID uh, isolation. isolation point in the Gold Coast and we're driving up to well Kingscliff today and then tomorrow we'll be crossing the border so we've had to obtain a permit or a pass to get over the Queensland border during this uh, COVID period and we'll be rejoining our boat to depart and bring it back to Sydney. So a beautiful day for a long drive. Here we go. Do you remember what it was like when we were coming home from the Gold Coast to Sydney? There was no traffic at all. We had very little vehicular traffic except for the trucks, so no cars. We were virtually the only car on the highway. Uh, we came across many transports, so with their containers, etc. So this is quite uh, un back to normal, really, looking yeah. at all this traffic. So six weeks, what a change. weeks at home we are reunited with the boat and here she is oh did we mention that we've renamed it larrikin our previous boat the helia 44 was named the larrikin and we rather liked it it's become part of us so our elba 45 has become larrikin it's pretty good isn't it good on boat works complimentary vehicle so that we can get ourselves all set up do a little bit more shopping before we set out we've even got our own sanitizer and towel <laughs> they think of everything <laughs> out of boat works where we've had the boat in care for six weeks actually multi health solutions took beautiful care and carried out some warranty and repair work we needed that and some fitting of other items and boat works is just the most magnificent uh, setup it is very very user friendly and here we are in the Cuba River we've just left the boat works uh, we're heading down towards Sanctuary Cove and then we'll uh, continue down towards the broad water and out through the seaway on our way towards Sydney. We're just passing Sanctuary Cove. Uh, this is where they have uh, the International Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show is held here every year. Unfortunately this year because of COVID that was uh, postponed. They have a new marina dock here now and also a new 24 hour fuel dock which is very uh handy. very very convenient it is oh well oh well uh, we came over the border yesterday i, I didn't get we we pre-stocked the boat and we're actually because of the weather we had to wait off of a little bit so we're heading down the river now as we uh, speak uh, to, to start our trip down to uh, sydney so I've been in touch with the Seaway Tower, I'll be talking to them on the way up anyway and um, we'll go on from there. Okay, all went very well, thank you for your help. Well, this is really exciting isn't it? It's um, part of the final leg of us getting the boat home. It feels a bit surreal doesn't it? It does, yes. Yeah. So we're going down the uh, Broadwater now as we make our way towards Southport Bar. We've got Wave Break Island ahead and the uh, high rises of Surface Paradise, the South Port of Surface Paradise in the distance. It's actually a sunny morning behind, a little bit of cloud and uh, a southerly breeze ahead, unfortunately. So we'll it's be... not ideal, is it, to be no. setting out, but hopefully, what, the first little bit? The first uh, eight or ten hours we'll be motoring, I think, and then we'll actually have some favourable winds and we'll be able to hoist sails and get on our way and a sail, which will be lovely. It'll be good to get home. We're 
in for a bit of ride. Uh, two souls on board. Uh, we're a sailing catamaran for the 13 and a half metre cat, and our contact number is uh, 04. Uh, we're a New South Wales business now. We're on the AIS and we're showing up at Uncle uh, Island and uh, Elvis Lord going across the bar today. easily swell of about a metre and a half to two metres it's kicking up and uh, a little choppy so once we're clear of this we should be uh, that should be a smooth oh daylight after a very very bumpy start leaving Southport we sailed through the night or oh, we didn't sail actually we were um, under motor the whole way and it was quite rough and uncomfortable but in the wee hours it sort of calmed down and we had quite a, a good passage. We're just coming into Coffs Harbour. We're going to refuel and just keep going. Good morning. Good morning, Captain. We're half an hour away from Coffs. Okay. Nice calm sea. It is a calm sea. But no wind or very little wind, light wind. Some daylight. There's our fuel. Sorry. 61%. 61%. We'll refuel now that we're in Coffs Harbour. 94 in the water tank, and it's 24 degrees in the water temperature here. It's very warm water with the uh, southeast coast current, or the east coast current. Can you believe it? France to Coffs Harbour, just like that. <laughs> I wish. Feel good? Feel good. Still good. <laughs> With all of the trips that we've done up and down the coast over the past few years, Coffs Harbour has certainly been a, a good um, safe haven for us, but also a good spot to refuel, isn't it? It has. It's got a 24 hour fuel dock, which is very. Uh, and it's sort of halfway up the coast for us when we're heading from Sydney to, say, the Sunshine Coast. Correct. So um, it's always been a good, good one.
how nice was that? We had friendly locals again who um, helped us out with refueling. It's a beautiful spot. Sydney, here we come. Woohoo! <laughs> In the safety of the harbour, lovely smooth water, we've managed to get our main up with the anticipation that we'll be doing some sailing today. Not too much motoring. Here we go. Just leaving Port Macquarie. Harbour and uh, this boat in front of us, I'd say it's a tourist boat taking people out whale watching for the day. This time of the year on the east coast of Australia, the whales are travelling from the south north. And there is certainly a lot out there. We have seen some since we left the Gold Coast and we anticipate that today we'll see even more. So hopefully we'll get some footage of them. I hope they surface again. Darn, I missed it. Two whales right here. Oh, there it is. There it is. Fantastic. Truly amazing. What a difference tonight. It's a beautiful sunset. It's been a lovely day. Last night it was just horrid. The sea was lumpy. It was pouring with rain. Look at it now. It's stunning. Sunday morning, we're out of Stockton Bight, out from Newcastle, and look what's happened to the weather. 
sunshine gone. How quickly things can change. Hoping to get into Sydney by 9 p.m. tonight, but what's the ETA now, Uh It's looking around 11 o'clock, so we've just hit a huge squall. Westerly winds up to 30 knots with the rain heavy, which is picking up uh, quite a bit of chop now across Stockton Right, so not much fun. No. And that all happened in a matter of an hour or half an hour. We were in calm conditions with very light, about a five knot. Southwestly. Um, it's now back to 15 knots, but it was up to 30 knots a few minutes ago. Wow. This wasn't on the travel brochure. No. <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. It was just a really severe squall that came through, and uh, things are starting to settle down now. So our ETA again is more like 9 pm tonight in Sydney Harbour. That'll be nice to get there. You just never can tell what the weather's going to do. That squall wasn't, wasn't really forecast. And boy, it was severe. So, little, looking a little bit brighter under those clouds and hopefully we'll be in sunshine soon. beautiful is this waking up to a lovely sunny day in Sydney Harbour. I can hardly believe it. We've come all this way from France to Australia. of relaxing nights on the mooring at Cornertine Bay. We're now preparing the boat to take it into Rushcutters Bay at the marina, ready for the open days on Friday and Saturday this week. Gordon's been working hard, polishing and cleaning up, and the boat looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? Some of them are new to the sailing 
and new to Catamaran, so it's wonderful to be able to share our history and our knowledge of the boats at Fontaine Catamarans with them. And they can see that we're just ordinary people, or an ordinary couple. <laughs> but we're ambassadors for Multi Health Solutions at the same time, so you know we're uh, happy to help, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. It's uh, quite enjoyable. Yeah, and it does encourage them to to, to uh, give some thought to having an adventure like we have. So the team from Multi Hole Solutions are here. They've ushered us into the pen and look, look where we are. Welcome to Rush Cutters Bay. I'm so excited because uh, two of our daughters have come on board for the very first time. Hi, Rach. Hi, Hi. Sam. Hi. We're so excited. It's beautiful. Oh, we love Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Gorgeous. Thank you. It's so good to have you home. All the way from France. That's I know. Good. How good is that? We have a sticky bag. Okay. Take a look downstairs, girls. Yeah, let's have a look at this. This is the owner's owner's bedroom. cabin. It's all just beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at the size of this. Oh, oh wow. My goodness. Lots of space. Wow, it's huge. TV. A big oh, bed. Wow. A TV. It is huge. Yeah, it's special, isn't it? Mirror, Side tables, oh, that's great. Oh, oh wow, big wardrobe, double, oh, my goodness, hanging space, that's just beautiful. And your private. Wow, look at this. Oh, oh. oh. And you did. We didn't even notice. Yeah. No, we didn't. See, you sit up here and you. You're thrown. And you put your arms <laughs> on the side and. Bang, where do you go? It's nice and spacious, even the bathroom. Look at this massive shower. Yeah, sure. oh, that's beautiful, the timber work. Gorgeous. Look, there's a huge sink. And there's storage yeah. everywhere. Look underneath. Yeah, big cupboard there, big cupboard here. Oh, wow. That's and we, cool. we wow. call it the toilet paper market. The oh. <laughs> we came in we heard about COVID. COVID, they prepared. We were there. Oh, make it kill it. But there's so oh, wow. much storage. There's more than my bathroom at home. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's and I like. It. I like the, the cabinetry and the, the design, it's just beautiful. It's all very modern and sleek and a colour scheme. Carpet. Oh. Beautiful. And you could do makeup there. Oh, yeah. That's that is so pattern. much room. What's this? There's that just done. Uh, oh, it's covered as well. Oh, wow. It's too. Oh, wow. There's so much storage. And all along here, these white cupboards here oh, are all really? open. Oh, wow. Beautiful. That's different. There's yeah, a latch underneath. Just here, Lou. I've got enough t shirts at home. Look at all Did that space. Wow. It's beautiful. Does that swing across the TV? It does. It swings wow. out. Yeah. 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 We can. Yeah. Oh, sure. oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh that's amazing. Is it lovely? Awesome. That is so great. <laughs> look, look at the bracket. It's just built like. Oh, this is luxury. How nice. Just listening yeah, to the water in. lapping on the side of the boat when you're in bed. Yeah, yeah we're rather sweet. thrilled with it. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's so spacious. That's beautiful. Congratulations. Stand up, Peter. This is my main role today. Keep us COVID safe. Everyone's pretty respectful and um, they use the hand sanitizer when they come in and try to keep a safe distance. So yeah, this should work. COVID style boat show. So how many people do you reckon we had at the mini boat show, COVID style? Well, I think we had extras, so I'd say about 80 total. Yeah. 40. It was nice. It was nice and relaxed, but it was constant, a constant flow of people. And weren't they just so excited <laughs> to see our well, boat? Well, they made an appointment to come and see the boat, so 
they were very serious about looking at the boat. Yeah. They weren't talky because that's for sure. It's good. Yeah. And it's always such fun telling our story. They, there were so many questions, weren't there? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we've enthused others and encouraged them, which is what it's all about. have the most perfect day for our final leg. Sure do. This is a, a light northwesterly breeze. We hope a calm sea outside. Yeah, beautiful sunshine. Look at this harbour. Spectacular, isn't it? So Sydney heads. How to navigate from here, Gordon? Turn right. Okay, and we're on your right. <laughs> Won't be long. We anticipate this uh, final leg to be about two and a half hours from Sydney Heads. Here we go. Just passing the entrance to Botany Bay and coming up onto Cape Salander. Beautiful day out here. We've seen quite a few whales. It's just stunning. We've just entered Bait Bay, and this is a famous voodoo surfing spot we're looking at around to Mary's Reef. And it's a stunning, stunning day. We're nearly there. A larrikin has arrived. <laughs> so we're nearly home. Oh, we're a tad excited. We're in the this, swell here. Look at the reef breaking here, Look right on it. the edge of the reef. We are. That's um, spectacular. <laughs> what a stunning day. Yes, we are so fortunate we live in such a beautiful part of the world. It's very, very pretty down here. Yeah, there's our beloved Cronulla Beach. How special. We're finally here. Welcome home. We made it. Just over here on the uh, beach side, just coming through the, the swell as it was going in, a dolphin actually came over and left out. Spectacular. Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey Gordo, look over there. Shark There's Island. Shark <laughs> Island, but just on the shoreline there, that's our first home. It is, yes. We had a one bedroom unit just over there when we were first married. And uh, oh boy. So now we have the unit, it's uh, floating out in front. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were living in that little one bedroom unit, would we ever have dreamt that no, we'd do what was, we've done? Uh, no, this would have been. Yeah, you wouldn't have believed you could do, end up doing yeah. this. Yeah, aren't we lucky? We certainly are, very fortunate. Look, we're coming up to uh, Bass and Flinders Point. We're coming up to Bass and Flinders Point and look at all those people. Oh my goodness. They're the family and friends who have uh, followed us and their thoughts and prayers. Oh, what a moment. Love so it. many people there. Proud. Woo! <laughs> All waving. Hi, Matt. How lovely to have an escort. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? What a beautiful day. And we actually sailed it. <laughs> we came and sailed on. Uh, lovely to see you. <laughs> beautiful. We've got to drop the main when we get in. We're going to drop the main when we get in. Thank you. 
We have had a fun afternoon with family and friends and uh, the friends have left and now we've been left with just family. It was a big adventure, huge adventure. <laughs> it became more of an adventure than we anticipated or a very different one, that's for sure. Yes, the challenge was thrown out when we uh, decided to purchase the boat and actually sail it home. So, it, just thinking about it, because we'd done the Atlantic in the previously, hadn't mm, we? So mm. we knew what was going to come our way on the Atlantic crossing, but the Pacific was the unknown, and um, we were looking forward to that. Yeah. Yes, it would have been nice to have spent more time in the Pacific and stopping off here and there, but uh, that wasn't to be. No. Mm. We looked back and thought, Phew, <laughs> look what we've just done. I don't know that um, it's almost the same sense of achievement, or the level of sense of achievement, as the level of sense of um, relief to get back <laughs> with the COVID-19 situation and the lockdown and us not knowing how we were going to be received back in Australia. Um, and being told that we had to go into isolation, that was um, a lot of anxiety right at the end there. So the sense of relief of actually getting home, finding out what our, our um, fate was to be, and uh, then of course, every now and then you'd think about it and you'd think, hang on a minute, what have we just done? Wow. But we'd, you know, <laughs> to look at the boat, it's, to see what we put the boat through over that period of time too, and it's, it still mm. looks brand new and we oh, it sure it, does. It's to look turn around and look at what we had just done and then look at the boat mm. we sailed in it was um, yeah mm. quite amazing well, it was exciting actually <laughs> it was our Thinking home on the water for quite a number of weeks wasn't it mm. and uh, very very comfortable and we felt very safe in it yeah. yes we have we've got one particular friend who he just he was so enwrapped in this adventure, as a, you said, an adventure. He couldn't wait to present us with a a, um, a folder, a, a full documented history of what we had just done. He had recorded or printed off a lot of our weather patterns that we had experienced that were coming through on the Predict Wind Tracker. So he's that's a history we've got now. He recorded all the blogs that Lou had put together. Well, we yes. both put some together. And they'd gone on those as well. Because we'd ended up writing yeah. something every day as we crossed the Pacific. And um, I always thought in my mind, I was thinking, wow, I, we really should put all this together in, a, in the form of a, a, a book. Or, but um, We were presented with this when we got our home. Our friend did So it. we keep getting reminded now. So people and it's ask, lovely. you know, when we say, well, here it is. It's, um, mm. you know, you've got a... a visual presentation yes. you can go and we can relive a lot of it too with our memories. Yeah and looking so. back on the video presentations now. Um, oh yes. The, uh, each episode comes out and we look at it and think oh wow we did that was what we did. <laughs> I guess the reality is that there are many highlights but uh, thinking back certainly going through the Panama Canal was an extraordinary um, experience and something not everyone does. It was intriguing, it was, wasn't it? It was interesting, yeah. And we were fortunate we had uh, other friends with us as well, so there were five of us on the boat and we were lucky to be able to share with them. Mm. Yeah, th that was a highlight, I think, the, the that experience. The actual sailing uh, from A to B every day it becomes a routine and the highlights during that is probably catching a nice fish for the meals yes but um and we were looking forward to the atolls and, and the experience around some of these tropical islands in the pacific mm. which would have been a, you know that they would be the highlights that we were hoping and planning and yeah we yes. had all the gear, we had our swimsuits and our <laughs> snorkels and goggles and flippers but never touched them <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, so on this particular trip, yeah, I think, and, and I suppose managing around a cyclone, I know it, it doesn't sound exciting, but we had to go through this mental uh, exercise, mm. 
and um, planning on how we were going to manage all this and getting getting the boat keeping the boat safe and the mm. crew safe everyone safe doing a trip it's hardly a highlight but it was part of the trip and it became a story in our trip as well because so many people were so anxious they would be watching yes. these uh, weather reports the predict wind forecasts and, and on their compacted um, images that they were receiving it looked it looked horrible and we were fortunate to uh, get around all that so that was mm. that was ex that was part of the uh, highlight but, yeah. but the experience of Panama was definitely up there mm. Mm. oh the Elba 45 it's just so luxurious and uh, the, the way that they redesign the, or design these boats uh, to give that sense of space and volume is amazing. We've owned an Arana 44, loved it, thought there was no way that they could improve on that but then sold the Arana, we bought a 44, the Helia, the Helia 44 and suddenly went whoa this is magic. And then, yeah. of course, to look at, this. look at the Elba 4.5, we go, oh my goodness, one step up again. It's, uh, it's just yeah. spectacular, beautiful. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, you, you start to think, how can they improve on these models? And the, the volume and the uh, comfort they have on board a cruising catamaran, and this is not just a condo moran, this boat actually sails extremely well. It's a, They've redesigned the hull, and I, I mm, love the way mm. it performs. It's a very, very good sailing boat. It's, it's the feel of, of mm. the um, Elba 45. It, it feels solid and sailing so well, mm. uh, even from the comfort point of view of the noise inside, it's quiet compared to the others. I thought the others were good, but this is even quieter and yeah, it improved comfort. It's great. It's a very comfortable boat to travel on. And the ride, um, exceptional. Like mm. uh, we, we were amazed at the, even through all the rough seas and the and the swells that we were going through, from our previous boats that would have been uh, a little bit uncomfortable. But this boat, for some reason, I just described it as a soft, soft ride. At most of the times, it came. That's how I I, I felt. We, we mm. were always mm. we weren't being jarred or anything. So yeah, they've done a, a magnificent job. Been. <laughs> This boat's been over up to 20 knots. And that was in the Caribbean, coming from Martinique across mm. to the Panama. But yeah, we've had moments, but the boat handles it beautifully. It is now. Tis now. <laughs> <laughs> it was rebuilt. <laughs> we had an issue. Uh, <laughs> but all along we felt perfectly safe, didn't yeah, we? We did. And the boat, the boat handled it all beautifully mm. and uh, yeah, it, it is, it's an amazing boat, the Elba 45. The movement is 24-7, the boat's always moving mm. and there's no way you can anchor in 5,000 metres of water. And physically that's where it's very wearing, it's just that constant movement, the constant noise um, and the, the constant uh, care and uh, preparation for, of the boat depending on what's going on, what the conditions are. Mm. Uh, because and the conditions are changing constantly too, and you so have to keep up we, with it. We had to stop. We got to a stage where we were actually going um, away from Australia and our track. We were in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, we were above Harold then, the cyclone. Uh, it had been blowing up to 35, 40 knots, and the seas were big. There wasn't, they were mostly rain squalls though, and we just wanted a break. Um, our other crew member was asleep. It was midnight. We just dropped the sails and the boat on its own went side on to the swell and to the wind and it just went quiet. And the boat was just beautifully rolling without much, it wasn't uh, rough or, or- We were very surprised we were how so peaceful. Surprised at how par calm peaceful it, was. it felt. Mm. Mm. And we actually got four or five hours sleep just in that period between midnight and Phil came up at five o'clock and thought we had jumped overboard because it was so quiet. He couldn't see us. I was curled up on one side near the uh, table, uh, outdoor cockpit table. Louise was underneath the doona inside. He hadn't seen her there. Looked at the helm, no one at the helm, 
no noise, no sales, and he thought he got the fright of his life. He got the fright of his life, <laughs> and uh, yes, it was. And he was surprised that we had actually mm. managed to do that, and felt that that wasn't such a bad thing. It was a good experience. <laughs> mm. Mm. So yeah, things like that have uh, happened, and yes, and I think doing a passage of that length of time, uh, a lot of people don't appreciate that it's not just the physical fatigue, it's also the mental fatigue uh, that takes its toll. And uh, if the weather is, is uh, bad for quite some time, you, you do become very, very tired. And well, did you manage fuel, water, food, the sailing, you're trying to look after the crew, you're looking after your boat all the time. So mm. it's, a, it's an exercise. It is. And then all of a sudden it's gone and you can sit back and relax and enjoy the sailing again. But, it, it, but it's part of cruising. I think everyone has to go through a little bit of this at times and mostly it's management and planning that can keep you away from all those, uh, those, those sort of events. But we were in the middle of it and uh, we had nowhere else. We had to head this direction, so that was it. We were caught in it and had to cope with it. Uh, for someone doing it the first time, I'd go into, into the Median Spring and leave towards the end of their summer. Don't get caught in the winter winds and the winter storms that come through. And then plan to spend some time in the Canaries. Lanzarote is unique mm. and beautiful. So you could probably spend um, a week or two around the islands just exploring. If you want to stay, fine, but you've always got to plan ahead for the crossing as well. And that's, for us, it was Very 16 seasonal. days this mm. time. Last time it was uh, tw uh, no, 18 days. 18 days, the first the time. The first time. So you want to allow three weeks, say, for the crossing. And we went to Martinique. Uh, when you arrive in the Caribbean, yeah, it's a it's it's a beautiful part of the world to visit. Yes. So you would allocate again a season at least, but you're governed again by the hurricane season. Yeah, there's a lot to see in the Caribbean. Mm. Mm. Uh, we elected to go north, which was taking us. Uh, this is our first visit. For, in our uh, previous in boat. Previous boat. So go north through the islands up to the British Virgin Islands, Bahamas, and we end up in North America actually in the end, uh, from the. Caribbean to Australia, that's where now plans had to be modified and changed. The Panama Canal was uh, very, very different and uh, quite an experience, something that not many people do. And uh, we enjoyed that and of course had extra company too, uh, which made it a lot of fun. But then getting into the Pacific, uh, that's when things started to change for us and our uh, the whole idea of, of what we were going to experience changed. And after leaving Panama, that uh, because of COVID, things were starting to shut down. I mean, we thought we were going to be the unique people isolated out on the ocean, just three of us. And in the end, we weren't unique at all. It was everyone else doing exactly the same thing at home. They so were being they were isolated, isolated too. Yeah. And it, it seemed really strange. So it, the, the crossing in the Pacific, you could spend a year doing that, but again, again, you're governed by the weather patterns, mm. um, the cyclone season, uh, trade winds. So we were planning and hoping to get into these trade winds in March, into April. So we left uh, Panama in mid-February, towards the end of February, thinking that we were a little bit early. And uh, lo and behold, there were very, there were, the winds were not the normal trade winds that you'd expect to see. So the crossing to Tahiti was quite slow. And that was, again, like we were saying, modified, our expectations were modified by the COVID and the unraveling of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then we were told we couldn't stop at any of the atolls or any of the islands, places we were planning to visit, the Marquises. Mm -hmm. I grew up sailing as a child in small dinghies. Um, so yeah, I. I had that experience of racing just inshore and it really wasn't until later well, in I, life. Well I met, I, I had no sailing experience initially until I met Louise and that was, that was uh, before romance, before 
weddings and... It's a rather cute story. He came down to the local sailing club and asked the Commodore, who happened to be my father, asked if anyone needed a crew for the day. And Dad said, ah, oh, Lou needs a crew. You could go with her. On so, a cherub. On a, a cherub, yes. And a wire, a trapeze. And look, I'm a country boy. I'd never sailed on a boat. And they threw me on board this thing. Well, you came down to the, the dock and offered your services. And I said, so do you know how to sail? And he said, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know how to sail. And I said, great. Look, we're going to be taking off in 20 minutes. So um, here's the trapeze harness. And um, I've just got to do something, but I'll, I'll come back and we can set out. I didn't realise that he didn't have as much experience and so we set off across the bay. It was quite a windy day. I was on the helm, Gordon was out on the trapeze and I said, ready about? And he said, oh, okay. I went about, he never unhooked himself from the trapeze. I had no idea what ready about meant. He ended up <laughs> swinging around the force day and we went <laughs> into the water. Anyway, and as I climbed up onto the onto the centre board, because I was always the first on the centre board, I looked across and I said, I thought you said you knew how to sail. And he looked up <laughs> and he said, I thought I did. <laughs> so and that was the beginning of the That was the beginning of the uh, romance. The, well, the beginning of our sailing, <laughs> my sailing experience. But then we got uh, friends who had a, uh, a catamaran, a sea wind, mm. 850 in those days, and they used to do twilight races, and I was invited as crew. The girls weren't loud, it was just boys. I was so frustrated. And, uh, I wanted to get on there and, yeah, and uh, so race. I cut my teeth on mm. those a bit. I, I was mm. always in charge of the uh, head sort of sheeting and, and we'd, we'd do really well competing. And then he bought a larger sea wind and we both sailed on that mm. as crew on the regattas. And so a we fun got to, boat we to, got to, to race. We got to experience some sailing on cats. And at that stage, we actually owned a big old stink boat, a, a big old fishing trawler that come out of the Maclay River at Southwest Rocks. Beautiful old boat. Yeah. But it was perfect for port hacking. Perfect for port hacking and three small children. It was yeah. fun. So that was uh, our sailing experience then. And then the Orana 44, uh, that was just East Coast, Australia. So uh, pottering, going mm. between Sydney, as far south. We went to Melbourne. Well, we both had the desire to get something big enough that we could do some offshore sailing and uh, blue, true blue, blue water, water sailing. Yeah. And that's why we were attracted to the Fontaine Peugeot brand, because whenever we looked at their models, we recognised their build, the um, height of the gunnels, the bridge decks clearance, and the capability of going offshore. Mm, well, these 43 in those days was sort of the boat we were looking at, mm. but we. We weren't quite hooked up on their design interior-wise and, and they came out with this Arana and that was the catalyst that we thought, right, let's do this. <laughs> so not a lot of um, sailing experience initially, but we built and then the uh, Arana experience up and down the East Coast gave us this taste of blue water. It, although not right away offshore, but enough. We went to Melbourne and back. We went up the East Coast as far as mm. um, Lady Musgrave. We didn't do the Barry Reef. Well, it excited us enough to contemplate then doing a factory pickup. Yeah. And the idea of sailing home to Australia. And and was... we always thought, well, by the time we get home, we will be experienced. <laughs> <laughs> we'll people, be learning. <laughs> people would say, you must be good sailors, and we'd say. Well, we By the be. time we get home, we will be. <laughs> <laughs> so we've built on that, and that's happened over the years from uh, 2006, mm. 2005, 6 we've purchased the around. Mm. So that's so, how long we've had this uh, relationship with multi hole Solutions. And Fontaine Peugeot. And Fontaine Peugeot, yeah. So prior to that, Sea Wind, yes, that was a learning mm. experience as well. That was the beginning before then, yeah. Well, I, I see our catamaran as an extension of our home. And so to get this boat home to Australia and be able to share it with our family and friends was really important. And uh, we've done that and we're just about to set out for that final leg to get it home from Queensland to and, Sydney. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and in the future, this boat, I'm sure we'll hopefully get back to somewhere like New Caledonia because that's mm. somewhere that would excite us to be somewhere in the Pacific. So maybe not um, the massive blue water passage we've just done. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm 70 next year, so the years are ticking on. I don't know how much longer we're going to have the energy to keep doing all of this, but uh, it, it, look, 
we don't know what the future is with this bait, but Wouldn't we'll continue to work with Multi Health Solutions uh, with bait shows, yeah. sharing our experience and also explaining these FP baits because we know uh, we know the boat front to back, mm. just virtually walk on any of their models now. We can point to design and features and, and, and explain to people how they best work and to set up their boats for cruising, living aboard, sailing, just uh, a lot of little things. And so, yeah, our, our relationship, I'm sure, will stay strong with uh, multi hull solutions in the future. And with any, um, you know, further ideas of doing long passages, wouldn't it be nice if our children and grandchildren joined us and yeah. fell in love with it like we have yeah, yeah. but you know it's um we love mixing with people with the same ideas and the same dreams and to help share ours and help them make a uh, a choice that's good for them yeah. to show and, them and that it's fun we can do it they can do it too yeah and <laughs> we've developed some beautiful relationships with a lot of people now that have moved on to Fontaine Peugeot cats mm. and uh, yeah a lot of and worldwide you know we've met people cruising this is one of the pleasures of cruising as well it doesn't matter where you stop uh, you'll meet up with other sailors mm. it's and a they're community not necessarily all on cats you know we've got a friend now sailing from um, Norfolk Island to Sydney he left today and he's been in lockdown in Norfolk Island for the last week or two and he's sailing single-handed across the Pacific now mm. and he's uh, yeah, he, he's he, kept in touch. He's kept in touch and that, that, that's someone we met on the dock in Tahiti mm. uh, back in uh, uh, early April before we left to come back here to Australia. So, and, and he's just keeping in touch. So, you know, this is what can happen. Just mm. uh, yeah, like-minded, it's fun. It's good fun. Yeah.